My name is Midge Lancet, and I'm the director of the Healing and Creative Arts Center. Haven't you ever been around somebody who is an adult, but you feel like they're five years old? That person is stuck. In order for them to get unstuck, this is a tool or technique for them to feel safe. And when we create a safe environment, which is non-judgmental, and it's a container for them to be able to communicate and feel heard and to feel unconditional love or acceptance, that's when people automatically can release because the trust is there and then they move psychologically and emotionally along the developmental lines. Now, with that in mind, let me get into a little bit of the theory because I talk about the relational model and it integrates several different psychological models. Um, and it integrates the, um, the family systems and it also integrates developmental psychology. Developmental psychology was uh, developed by Piaget. And Piaget observed babies as they went through the life cycle tasks. And if you've read those books, babies grow at certain times, in certain ways, just like plants, animals, anyone. And so they observed what tasks, life cycle tasks, were mastered by the child psychologically throughout their life, throughout their young lifespan and then as they grew into adulthood. And they've developed theories around that. And so we understand that all relationships must go through different stages. First of all, the stage one is when the child and the mother are bonded and they don't know the difference because there's an umbilical cord, literally. And that's the way God set this up. And so it's supposed to be that way. Then, as the baby comes out, the cord is cut, there's a little bit of a separation, but for the first year and a half, the baby doesn't really know where the baby ends and the mother starts. And sometimes the mother doesn't either. <laughs> they're hooked to the hip, so to speak, and they're together and they just really bond. That's called the bonding stage. It's supposed to happen. Now, if these stages do not occur, that's why people cannot become intimate later. As you know, if the babies don't get love, they've done studies, they die in these orphanages and so forth. Um, if they don't bond, then they can't bond later on. They're not able to. And the only way to do it would be through this process that I'm talking about, this mirroring, because it, they missed it. And it's a, bond, it's a bonding stage. It's an affirmation stage. It's a, you are wonderful. You are awesome. I'm so glad you were born. Rejoicing over the infant, like the mother did in the line today. You saw that happen, right? So that's the first stage. Now, the children of Israel went through this stage, and they were, they were bonded. They were enmeshed. We call that enmeshment, E-N-M-E-S-H-E-D in family systems talk, Bowen theory, when he studied the family. And that means that they get stuck in the bonding stage, and they don't understand where they end, and the next family member begins because of the emotional issues, the shame, the fear, the doubt, the insecurity, the inferiority, whatever has developed since the fall, that's what happens. And with the children of Israel, that happened. They got stuck in the enmeshment stage. And what did they say? They, they could not get over their, their slave mentality. And they told, and they transferred it onto God. And they told God, we want to go back to Egypt where we could eat, eat the fruits, and so on and so forth. Why did you bring us here to kill us? They couldn't get over it. They couldn't separate. They, they were really stuck in enmeshment. They couldn't let go of the past. They couldn't let go of Egypt. They were bonded to that mentality. And people in relationships sometimes, you'll see families that are very enmeshed, they fight a lot. And remember what happened to the children of Israel. They were in big time strife. They were always fighting, and they were fighting with Moses, and they weren't listening, and they, they just were constantly aggravating. No matter what God did to prove himself, they were stuck. They were not going to let go. That's called hostile dependency. Now, when I grew up, that's, that's what was in my family system. 
a stuck place and you can see it because people learn and they develop according to their family system and it goes back through the generations and it started with my mother's family and my father's family where and I've heard stories about it where people would get married and they would fight all the time they were trying to separate but they never mastered separation which is differentiation in, in systems language that Bowen coined. Healthy people eventually come to respect each other's differences that have relationships, respect each other, other's differences in their thinking, and honor that. And we were talking about that earlier. One politician is respectful and honors the other person's differences. And even when things came up and the media tried to attack the family, no. See, this person that would be able to do that is a high level person who's gone through this stage of differentiation. Somebody who would be fighting like some of the politicians did in the beginning of the race and attack each other, that's called being stuck in hostile dependency. They don't know where they end and the other person starts. So they're just kicking and screaming and fighting, trying to come into differentiation, but stuck. That's why the children of Israel never entered the Promised Land. They never got to the point of differentiation, except for a few. Even Moses didn't make it. Explain differentiation. Okay. Now, what happens is when a person is allowed to think, feel, and be separate from another, then they're allowed to have their own thoughts and feelings and they're not shamed for that. And, and people don't jump in and try to fix them. They don't jump in and try to change them. And we had this conversation where you were, it's easier for you to talk to one of my family members who has a little bit of a different philosophy on politics than I do. And I fake it pretty good when I talk to this person and I don't put my views on them. I let them express themselves to a point and then I get tired of it and I say okay and I mirror it and then I then I need us I need my space because you know I'm working on being differentiated and allowing the person to have their own thoughts and feelings for you it's much easier you like it you said and you enjoyed it and that person was expressing all these views and I'm like, okay, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult for me. But that's because, and I'm a, that's because of my family background and it's also because of the knowledge I have of what should be done. And it's okay and I still love that person and I can hear them to a point and mirror them. But then I need, I need my space. Whereas I think if it wasn't a family member, it would be easier for me. To yeah, not to, not to fall into trying to share my viewpoint and make it about me. And it's about holding a space, knowing that I have my viewpoint, they have their viewpoint. This is about them. It's when we want to change somebody's mind, when we want to convince somebody that we're right, you know, as parents, we like to do that, but that's difficult with adult children. We need to let them be and re respect their viewpoint. That's called differentiation. That's when you master, okay? And then, as you, you master that in a, in a couple, when they're, when they're first married, they're so in love. They're enmeshed. The lower lumbar, the lower brain stem is what connects people and they have the endorphins and they love being with each other and they feel like they're one. And then about a year and a half into it, they start to notice the differences. Well, what you loved about the person drives you crazy now. And that's called differentiation. 